from from different countries they thought that okay we have to take one one step uh, to produce uh, uh, cultivars for these climate uh, climatic change scenarios coming in the future and they have taken uh, barley as as a model plant for for this for this aim so the idea we have for, for, from this project that this project in the future uh, will deliver new breeding strategies and tool uh, and toolkits for uh, posting crop improvement so it's not only working with with uh, barley but this is like a model for also improving uh, the the other the other crops like like uh, like wheat so uh, also this this uh, this project supposed to be uh, supposed to be in the future like a lead to new high yielding varieties selected to uh, anticipate future climate conditions so this is the idea behind behind this uh, this big project and this project, as I said, it's including 12 partners and these 12 partners from from different countries and the, uh, the project, uh, the project time, it's 36 uh, months, this is uh, three years, this is the title for the for the project, but the background for the project and for writing this project, it's the important point. So in this, in these 12 partners groups, they are they have this kind of panels for the, the, the genetic resources. This is like what was uh, Dr. Borner talking about yesterday. So we are, we are, we would like to um, uh, produce new cultivars, uh, resistance for diseases or tolerant for abiotic stresses or whatever. So we need for this to have the genetic resources. So the idea before writing this, this group they have already a panel of 200 European spring barley cultivars, including novel traits, and also another panel with 160 resistance lines for diseases. Uh, novel barley mutants affecting um, uh, the water use efficiency and the drought tolerance. So this is like, like the stock of the genetic resources they have in the 12 partners uh, groups. And they have already genotyping for all uh, all of these, or most of, of them before starting the project. They have the genotypic data for these collections, and they have already phenotyped them in some in some um, um, uh, uh, field uh, in in different countries for uh, to test them for water use efficiency, for yield parameters, for the architecture, for for the calm, for example, the disease resistance. So this background, that was the reason why they, this, this 12 partners write this kind of big project. So the, the project is divided into uh, five uh, work packages. The work package five, as you see here, this is the management and the, 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 um, the uh, dissemination of the, of the project. Otherwise, the other four packages, this is to work with the the, the target and the, uh, the target is the climatic change scenarios coming in the future and they um, from this uh, the step what they are taking this is this is to improve the the cultivars what we have based on the genetic resources using in this in this uh, uh, project and the work package one as you see here is the target it's advanced uh, predictive breeding tools so there is a genomic prediction uh, group is taking uh, responsibility for the genomic prediction, climate change scenarios, uh, crop uh, simulations, models. So like a computerized uh, 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 targets in this uh, in this one or tasks in this work package. Second work second work package is this is to uh, use the genetic and the physiological dissection of the traits. In this one, some groups take it, uh, taking the responsibility for testing this these resources under uh, nitrogen uh, to test the nitrogen use efficiency or, and also drought tolerance and water uh, use efficiency, water losing resistance, disease resistance, calm architecture, architecture, flowering time and yield components response to the uh, elevated CO2. So even the CO2 increasing nowadays because of the climatic uh, case, uh, because of the climate change it also taken in consideration in this project uh, work package uh, three this is the development of new genotypes not only to stick to these resources here but also producing based on these resources new um, and new and developed uh, 
uh, genotypes for the uh, for, for use in the uh, in the future. And uh, here also it takes in, the, in consideration this is the water use efficiency and the quantitative multi disease resistance, calm architecture and lodging and optimized flowering time. So I, I, I just give this slide maybe more than it's needed, but this is to explain to you, this is the focus of the projects nowadays all over the world. So every, uh, all groups all over the world targeting biotic and abiotic stress based on the uh, climatic changes. And this is what we need for feeding the people in the future. What I'm working with in this big project, it's the disease resistance in both work package two and work package three. Work package two to test one of these set. This is a 160 resistance lines, and the work package two to produce a new set used also. We can use also for uh, improvement the uh, quantitative uh, multi disease resistance in in barley as an example. So who is these 12 partners? These 12 partners, as you see here, I believe who is working with barley or wheat know uh, most of them. So this is the coordinator for the project. This is Luigi Cataverli from, um, uh, from Italy. And uh, these are here the other uh, group, group members uh, from different countries, from Denmark, from Italy, Finland, Spain. Uh, Scotland, the WBO, and Poland, uh, uh, Estonia, uh, yeah, so, and from, from Germany. So I'm, I'm here working in this group with uh, Professor Klaus Perrin, who is working in, um, he, he, he is the head of the plant breeding uh, group in, um, in the Faculty of Agriculture uh, in, in Martin Luther University in Halle. So I'm working here, and this is, the target is, who work with the diseases like like what I said before in work package two and work package three. So the pathogen resistance or what I am what I am doing in this in this project. So first of all, this is related to work package two. Uh, I am supposed to uh, test. 160 uh, uh, spring barley stick lines. So we have to. The plan is to test them under different conditions. So the plan is to test them in different countries. So it's, um, it's supposed to be run in four, uh, in four locations. This is the first in here in Germany and in Halle and second in, in Italy and third in Spain and fourth in Finland. So this is the four location and it's already done the running running them for two uh, for two uh, seasons. The first one was 20, um, 2019-2020 and the 2020-2021. And this is actually was in three locations only because of some reasons. So the partner from Finland could not uh, book space or in the location in Finland. So the test was only in the three locations, not in four like what was in the in the plan. And uh, uh, this is the task is for this this pathogen resistance part from the work package too, as I said. And the first one I would like to talk about a little bit about this. What what is this 160 barley uh, uh, stick lines or the genotypes? So this uh, genotypes, this is the set of 160. It's produced using two different strategies. The first strategy to produce single stick lines. And single stick lines, it comes from crossing between different donors with uh, one uh, genetic background. This is the Bambina, KWS Bambina. It's one of the cultivars susceptible for the diseases coming from KWS. Uh, and it's known for everybody who is working with cereals that this is one of the big companies producing seeds in, here in Germany. But be, before we talk about this, this crosses, I have to back again to this slide. So the, the crosses has been done based on um, a selection. And this selection has been done by these guys. This is uh, uh, away a few, few years back in, in accident. And uh, his name is Patrick Schweitzer. So he was working in, in IBK. And Patrick Schweitzer, it's one of the famous people working with uh, disease resistance. So he was, during his work, he was selected four different donors carrying four different genes. And these different genes, it's from his work, they are already 
resistance for the uh, resistance for the um, uh, disease diseases in barley and mainly for powdery mildew. What is this four genes? The first one, it's a cellulosensis-like gene, and the second one, this is germ-like gene, uh, germine, I'm sorry, germine-like gene, and the third one, cellulosensis-like gene D, and the, the fourth one, this is uh, chorosmid synthesis. He tested these four genes in the donors, and he found that these donors are already uh, resistant for these different uh, diseases here and mainly for powdery mildew. But we decide to test all of these um, uh, all of these uh, diseases in the four uh, locations, which was after that only three. This is to test and uh, score the symptoms for this uh, for this uh, diseases here. So how how this 160 elite uh, uh, spring barley was produced first as a single stick lines and this was uh, based on the crosses between each donor and this is the donor carrying this gene yeah so it's we call it here a it just for make it simple for dealing with this later on so this is the cultivar or the line carrying this uh, active gene and it show. Uh, resistance for the different diseases, I, as I said, it was crossed with Pamdina, which is susceptible, and the second one, this is Rick, which carrying this gene uh, crossed with Pamdina, and the third one, this is Hord, uh, uh, Hordium line, uh, was crossed with Pamdina also, which is carrying this, this uh, genes here. So the stick lines crossed and then using marker assisted selection we uh, we could use uh, uh, later on for each of this um, uh, progeny for the selection for for gene a based the marker it's coming from the gene and then we select based on this marker for uh, as uh, using marker assisted selection until we select 23 lines carrying this gene from this cross and 21 lines carrying this gene from this cross and 20 lines carrying this gene this is a cross made senses from this uh, from this cross this is until here we have uh, each time after the selection we make a, again back cross with bambina until we have back cross two so these these lines here is they are back cross two and then after that this back cross two from um, uh, from this uh, from this uh, crosses, it was uh, again growing in the field for two selfing, and in this also we used marker assisted selection from the gene thus to be sure that the plants they are carrying the targeted gene in each of them. So we continue with this 23 and 21 and 20 stick lines from uh, single stick line from each of these uh, of these crosses. And this is one part of the uh, of this 160 uh, spring barley. And all of them, when we grow, they are showing this three. They are showing uh, so somehow the resistance for the different diseases. The second strategy. This is the uh, to produce quadrabolistic else uh, quadrabolistic uh, lines. And this. This uh, quadrabolistic lines produced uh, using the second strategy, and the second strategy named as gene pyramiding. Yeah, so so it's uh, accumulating of the genes in one in in one line. So in this in this case, it's started with the crosses like the the first strategy with crosses between the each of the donors with the uh, with the background bambina from. Uh, KWS Bambina, and then the F1, it's crossed with, with each other from these four donors, and then the F1 seeds from all of these cross together from the F1 from this cross, and the F1 from this cross, it's crossed again together to have the quadruple stick line, and then it left for three times selfing with using marker assist selection from each of the genes for selecting lines. And based on this pyramiding, we could find not all of the lines coming from this after this selfing, the, not all of them carrying uh, uh, four genes, but also sometimes we have only one gene or zero of them. So based on the, uh, the marker assets selection, we could have three lines, which is zero quadrabolistic lines. So it's the crosses there, but none of the genes are presented in this, in this line. 
again one quadruple stick line only one gene coming from this uh, selection uh, gene A or B or C or D for example and this is the number of lines selected based on the present of each of these genes uh, or combination between two of them or three of them and this is the number of lines and this is the number of lines carrying supposed to carrying four of them in uh, five five lines this is how this uh, uh, collection was uh, produced and this collection uh, based on this and based on the idea that they are carrying resistance genes that was the reason why we decided in this project to grow them in different locations the growing was having, as I said, in three uh, locations, only not in four. So uh, this is the number of lines based on the selection at the end. First of all, we have the, the uh, donors, so the parents for used for this, in addition to some of other uh, wild type barley cultivars to compare between the donors and between these also. The single stick lines, like what I mentioned before, in addition to some others, not only the A, C, and D, some other crosses were also included here as a single stick line, but the quadruple stick lines, it comes only from A, C, A B, C, and D. So you see here the number of, of the lines. We grow them in 2019, 20, 2020, 20, and 2021. In, two, uh, in these two years, it was grown in uh, in Italy and also in uh, Zaragoza in Spain and in Halle in Germany. This is the three location. During this, I have taken the responsibility for scoring the disease resistance in this in this field so this is 160 line we grow uh, three replicates from each in in um, in in hala and then in this from each line three three blocks and in these plots i was i was uh, scoring the different diseases like what i mentioned here so scallet spot blotch boundary mildew net blotch or leaf rust this is what i have seen in 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 hala in addition to fusarium also so uh, how how I score it? So to score it, this is also one of the challenges. So uh, it's it's visually only. Yeah. So this this here I make I make this standard for myself. So based on this, I I score the plant. So if we if you have uh, very less or no symptoms at all, we give it one. That means it's resistance. And if you have the 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 leaves, it's full with the symptoms like this one. We call it we give it uh, nine. So the scoring, it was going from one to nine and I share this information and this data with the other location. So the locations, the three locations was using is the same scale for for uh, uh, for um, uh, scoring. It's from one to nine based on the uh, increasing in the, the infection. So the data, as you see here, this is a, like a comparison between the three locations only for boundary mildew, or, or excuse me, for all, all of them. What was, uh, what I have seen here in, in Hala and what others uh, found in the other locations in Italy and in Spain. So in 1920, I could, I could find very good data. The, the variance for the data was uh, 4.1 and the mean was 3.03 .03, and the mini, uh, minimum and the maximum was from one to nine. So I have some plots already didn't show any kind of uh, susceptibility for the disease and the others was full sus susceptible. And this was uh, uh, observation for the, in, in the location for all, uh, for all plots. This is observation, it means that uh, I have grown like six uh, from five to six times score all all the fields. So this number is not only one time, but this is for the for uh, the accumulation scoring. So I started like one month after after the first uh, uh, the appear of the first symptom, and after that I go until before harvesting like six times, and the accumulation was like two thousand two thousand four hundred uh, times for scoring. Leaf rust was the data was not that much because uh, here the mean is 1.3. That means not much uh, difference between the minimum and the maximum in the plots. And in the other uh, in the other uh, diseases, it was only one and zero something like this. So actually, this is this data we didn't take in consideration because that was a dry season. Yeah. So not all of these uh, diseases uh, appeared in our in our field. 
and it was also close to this data in in, in Italy, except for this uh, uh, PYDV, which is um, um, was not sure that if it is the one or not. So I put here a question mark because it was not clear if it's the right one or not. And from Spain, we have no uh, no good data, and this is because of in Italy and Spain it was also dry. If it's in German Germany uh, dry, that means in Italy and Spain it was also more dry, so we could not rely on this data. So we grow it we grow it again in 20 and 21, and then we have also powder mildew good uh, in in Halle and not, was not good in the other two uh, location, but leaf rust was good in. Uh, in, in the three locations, uh, spot blotch and net blotch was good in the Spain, so we can rely on some of this data for, uh, and also scaled for coming from the Spain and uh, and the Italy for the uh, for the analysis coming from the three location. I would like to look to the time and just give me a second. It's okay, Dr. Halmi. It's, it's okay. okay, 28 minutes. So I'm sorry. No, so. No, the, uh, okay. Uh, the the uh, the comparison between the uh, the the 2019 and the 2020, which I have done, and the 2021 in Hala, I compared it with another um, uh, another year. This this set of lines were um, were already um, uh, evaluated in in Hala in. In, diff in Germany, in different locations, in 2014. But actually, I presented here what I have, what I got from 2020 and 2021. And you see here, this is the number of the lines, and uh, the how how could be how you see the resistance for uh, this is like average or a mean for each of the quadruple or single stick lines, not for single line from 160. It's difficult to. To present, but here this is like a mean for each of the groups, and we see we can see here that from the groups for the quadruple stick lines here this is uh, this this um, uh, two quadruple stick lines B and C they are showing here and uh, in 2020 and 2021 uh, resistance for uh, boundary mildew. By the way, this is like um, increasing in the resistance comparing to Bambina. So you see Bambina here is zero. And this is the uh, how much resistance comparing to Bambina. So I consider it this zero, and this is 70% more, and 68% more, 73% more, 59, 62% more. And the red one, this is susceptible comparing to Bambina. So Bambina is zero, and this one is more more susceptible to uh, comparing to to Bambina. So if you look, if we look here for the uh, for the quadruple stick lines carrying uh, combination, so we will see uh, some of them already, not, not some, but actually all of them here with minus, that means they are better than uh, Bambina in the, two, in the two years. So this is how the pyramiding of these uh, genes uh, was showing the uh, resistance comparing to the K KWS Bambina, which is the background for all of these all of this um, uh, bare meeting genes in the KWS Pampina line. So this this data here from 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 the data here uh, we decide that okay we will as I told you in work package three we are going to produce a new uh, lines for uh, breeding new uh, new cultivars. So we selected one of the lines from this three which showing uh, high uh, and stable susceptibility. It's a uh, in 2020, 68% more than Bambina, and 2021, 68.9. So we selected one of these lines to cross with the uh, another another cultivar to produce a new new set of uh, uh, barley uh, resistant to uh, diseases. So uh, our our target, our second target from the first uh, for, from this working package to see if the how how is this genes expression in the lines uh, and also how these genes working with other genes yeah so and to have this uh, to have this information we design we design one experiment this is for uh, rna seq experiment and to have this rna seq experiment we selected from our lines based on the data coming from the, the from hala related to powdery mildew 20 and 21 we selected 30 lines and as you see here from these 30 lines you will see blue and red that means the, we take in consideration to have 
some resistant and some susceptible and we are going to do the RNA sick. It's started already the experiment here in house. We have a group who is starting uh, the RNA extraction and doing RNA sick for for us. And based on the results will come from this, I, I expected it mid of the coming year. We will compare the expression of this uh, interested gene in addition to another gene and how they are working together or uh, establish a pathway for uh, uh, disease resistance in in this in this line so what uh, what is the samples we have taken i collected the samples from the field from each of the blots and um, uh, after that i selected these lines and then we have uh, the first the first year 2020 we have three replicates and 2021 we have two replicates from the two years we have five replicates time uh, uh, time uh, 30 uh, from 30 lines in addition, uh, 30 lines including the donor, uh, and two time points. So we have two time points, time 30, time 5. So we will end up with 30, uh, 300 samples for the RNA sick. It will take time, but we will have a good data out of this because it's based on the uh, natural infection and natural resistance or susceptible coming from the field itself. So uh, until here, I would like just to uh, conclude what, uh, make a conclusion uh, for what we have done until now. So we have these tasks in the pathogen resistance in this project. So the 160 uh, elite um, spring barley, it's tested in the different locations and has been done. And the genotyping, uh, geno, uh, uh, the SNP, uh, uh, SNP array, 50K SNP array has been done also for the 160. So we have the phenotypic data and genotypic data, and the RNA seq has started as I as I mentioned. And then we have to uh, connect the phenotypic data and genotypic data and establish GPTL and the GWAS analysis for this for these lines. And this actually we exhibit. I I am I'm I'm starting this. Uh, this work nowadays and no no results come out yet so i cannot show any of this uh, she was a she was a study for this uh, for this collection but by the middle of the come of the 2022 we will have uh, this data uh, available hopefully so that was the first the first part of the in uh, i did in this project the second part this is to produce a new set of lines uh, for the uh, for the uh, for, for for the tolerant for the diseases and actually as i mentioned this uh, we we did based on the data coming from the the field so we selected some lines and we crossed them with a new cultivar this is ex plural cultivar uh, uh, and this the the lines what we selected it should carry uh, uh, this this genes here but we selected one uh, or uh, one of them was the very good one. This is was carrying only three, not all, uh, not four, not four genes. And uh, to um, to produce this these lines, we used the speed breeding system. So we have selfing, uh, selfing, uh, two times selfing and two times speed breeding. And we I used the marker assisted selection for this for this um, uh, selection. And the new lines were, were containing uh, zero or one or two or three of these of these candidate uh, candidate genes here. And uh, the, no, the the last number I I have it from this crosses. It was 81 different lines. This is which I am going to grow them in the field here in Germany. And also I sent them to Italy and Spain. And I'm going to send to Finland to test in the four locations the new the new set. How I produce this, I will go fast here. This is uh, the crosses between these different quadruple stick lines with, with Explorer. We have this uh, offspring F1, and then this F1 should be uh, confirmed if it's, it's right F1 or not. And I did this using SSR markers and also uh, uh, using a SNP marker, which is confirmed for me that all of them, uh, either using the SSR or SNP markers, all of them were, were uh, right uh, F1 seeds. And from this F1, I test the, the using marker assisted selection to be sure that they are carrying uh, these, these genes here. And then we use the speed breeding system. We have um, our, our, uh, our greenhouse uh, under control, so we started the first speed breeding, and then we grow the F1 seeds, and then I have taken the F1 seeds, and I grow again, but not because of the growth chamber. It was not enough for growing the F2, 
because we grow 1,000 plant. This is 1,000 plant from the uh, F1. So the growth chambers was not in enough. So the second speed breeding was in the uh, greenhouse. And from this 1,000 plants, I selected the uh, based on marker assisted selection, the lines. And from these lines, I got 12 lines carrying one gene and 17 carrying the second and the eight, eight lines carrying the third and the combination, as you see here, the number of the lines. And I also selected some zero. So that means they are not carrying any of the genes, but uh, only the background of the explorer. All, all of these lines, it was 81. I grow them again in the greenhouse and I confirm it using assist, marker assisted selection again in uh, if they are carrying the, the, the right the right genes or not and then after that uh, the multiplication has been done in the greenhouse and in the field and now they they are uh, they are ready i sent them already to uh, italy and, uh, uh, and spain for the new uh, season because in spain and italy they started like, like uh, not not like germany here they started nowadays the field uh, the field trial trials but in Hala, we are going to uh, grow them in, in, the, uh, in the coming year. And uh, we are going also to send them to, uh, to Finland. So the evaluation will be done like what we did with the 160 for all of the uh, symptoms we could see in the field. And we will take in also in consideration the plant height and all of this stuff. So the outlook of this, I expected by the end of the coming uh, the coming year, we will I will have all data collected together from the new set and the, uh, the old set, and then we will compare. We will have uh, very strong and um, resistance lines to use for the breeding for uh, the thesis, and we will join this data also with others. We we'll, maybe we have. The same lines also uh, could be resistance for uh, uh, other abiotic stress like drought, like uh, other groups testing, or these lines could be also have high you, uh, high water use efficiency. So we will combine the data to get together to come up with which lines we will use for uh, producing and improve the cultivars for the climatic scenario. So by this, I, um, I, I finish. I would like to uh, just thank uh, very much Klaus Pellin, who gave me this position and uh, uh, gave me the project to work with, and all the group members. And I'm thanking very much you for your attention. And I'm sorry for 10 minutes more. OK, thank you so much, Dr. Yusuf, for your interesting lecture. And uh, we are opening the discussion right now. So please, uh, if you have any question, just raise your hand and I will enable the, uh, the mic for you to talk directly with the speaker. Or either if you don't like to speak directly, just write your question in the chat room and I will read it to the speaker. <clears throat> so until someone writes a, a question, I have a question for you, Dr. Helmi. Yes, please, Abdullah. Uh, it might be uh, not close for what you just delivered, but uh, it, was ju it just was a question running in my mind when I was listening. So um, I was wondering if we have a desirable desirable genes, which is good for the plant, that maybe help the plants to be tolerant to the high temperature or to grow well in the uh, in the salty soil. If we have these genes and you want and we want to transfer them into another plant, which is not from the same species, like different plant, can we do this? Yeah, actually, it's a, it's a very, very, very good, uh, very good questions because you know the, not all crosses, not all crosses can be uh, can yeah. be successful. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's based on um, uh, based on how far these species from each other. Yeah, yeah, so if they are very far, I don't know how how successful it will be. But if they are close to each other from uh, as a species, you know this from the, the the classification of the of the plant. Yeah, so. You first of all look if they are close to each other as a species or not, and then you will uh, expect how the successful rate will be. Yeah. So uh, I remember one of the one of these um, uh, projects was running in Cairo University, and you know you know in close to the Mediterranean Sea there is some uh, uh, some uh, species already grown inside the the the, the 
waters from the Mediterranean Sea, yeah? And then yeah. the idea was these are already green and yeah. growing inside the, 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 the Mediterranean Sea water, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it may, might be they are carrying um, interesting genes for to, to grow and to stay green in this in this condition. So why yes. not we transfer it to, to barley or wheat? I yeah. know the project was running for six or seven years, but actually the results to see in hand, I I I I am not I'm, I'm not sure if they found something out of this or not because the process was not studied before the the study yeah. itself. Yeah, so you take this in mind. Yeah, this I is what I know. Yeah, I hope yeah. it's useful. Yeah, I hope it works actually for the. Uh, it's interesting for the land to grow in the in the water and give us uh, a good uh, production. So it will be amazing if we can transfer this these genes uh, to to another plant. Yeah. So I think we have a question here. Uh, he's saying that uh, um, from Hafiz Omar. He's saying excellent presentation. Uh, not a question. Not a question. Just a suggestion. Uh, the environment of Denmark is else cond uh, conceived uh, for for boundary mildew and leaf rust, and uh, you can maybe perform phenotypic uh, screening there as well to get uh, the good results. That's so a very just, nice suggestion, just, actually, because we are. We are, uh, we are, we, we could not, uh, unfortunately, we could not have it in Finland in the three locations, in the fourth location, as, as we said before, but we still have one from, uh, from uh, Denmark. We have uh, Surin Rasmussen, which is working in Copenhagen University. Maybe we arrange with him to grow the new set or the old set in Denmark also. It's a very nice uh, comment. I'm so thankful for you. Yeah. Um, there is a question from Dr. Amira Murad. Uh, she's saying thank you for your informative presentation. Uh, I, I have a question regarding the, gene, uh, the genes which you decide to uh, permit. Uh, have you chosen them or they raise uh, non-specific? Uh, actually, it was selected. As I said, it's not by myself. I am I'm mainly, like what Abdel Al say in the in the introduction, mainly working with the plant architecture and spike architecture in Bali since a long time. And this is the first project to work with biotic stress. That this is the first time for me. Uh, so the the selection has been done with this guy Patrick Schweitzer, which he, which is uh, which was uh, who was working in. Um, uh, IPK in Gatislaven as uh, in, in the group of disease resistance and then the selection has been done by him and uh, he found that these four genes this is already showing the tolerance for the uh, these these diseases in specific lines which used after that for uh, the crosses like what I show here in this line line um, uh, L, L9 uh, L94 and the RIC and the Hordium uh, 29 32, all of these lines were tested before the cross for the diseases, and he found that they are carrying these specific genes. In addition to uh, this one, S24IL, this is um, also one of the lines carrying another gene, the fourth gene, and uh, it was tested by, by Patrick Schweitzer, not myself. Okay, but anyway, thanks a lot for the nice question. Okay, Dr. Helmi, we are looking for a new question for you. Um, so, anyone have uh, any other question? Um, okay, Dr. Helmi, 